Hello friends and welcome back. So today we will discuss about network protocols and types of network protocols which include communication protocols, security and network management protocols. So without wasting any time, grab a notepad and let's begin. Network protocols are a set of rules outlining how connected devices communicate across a network to exchange information easily and safely. Protocols serve as a common language for devices to enable communication irrespective of differences in software, hardware or internal processes. Different protocols serve different functions to ensure efficient and quick network communication. Various type of network protocols can be categorized into three broad categories to help organizations operate seamlessly. Network communication protocols, network security protocols, and network management protocols. What are network communication protocols? These protocols determine the rules and formats to transfer data across networks. Communication protocols govern various aspects of analog and digital communications like authentication, error detection, among others. Some key network communication protocols include HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol commonly referred to as the protocol of the internet that allows communication between a server and a browser. For example, when you type a website URL into your browser address bar like www.abc.com and hit enter, your browser initiates an HTTP request to the server hosting the website and asking for the web page to be displayed. Next is Transmission Control Protocol also known as TCP. It is a reliable and connection-oriented protocol that helps in the sequential transmission of data packets to ensure data reaches the destination on time without duplication. For example, when you download a file from a server, TCP ensures that the data packets comprising the file are transmitted reliably and in the correct order. Like when you download a large software update, TCP ensures that each packet arrives intact and is assembled in the correct order on your computer. Internet Protocol or IP It facilitates routing of data packets across networks. IP contains addressing and control information to deliver packets across a network. It works along with TCP while it ensures delivering the packets to the right address TCP aligns them in the right order. For example, when you send an email to your friend, the email client breaks down your message into packets of data. IP adds addressing information to these packets specifying the senders and receivers IP addresses. And these packets are then routed across the internet, hopping through various routers and networks until they reach the recipient's email server. UDP User Datagram Protocol Unlike TCP, UDP is a connectionless protocol that doesn't ensure a connection between the application and server before transmitting a message. It's effective for use cases such as broadcast or multicast connections, like voice over internet protocol applications, which you also use, like Skype or Zoom, use UDP protocol for real-time communication. When you make a voice call using one of these applications, UDP packets containing your voice data are sent to the recipient's device without establishing a connection beforehand, which allows for faster transmission but with higher risk of packet loss. Next, we have File Transfer Protocol FTP. It allows file sharing between servers by establishing two TCP connections one for data transfer and other for control. The data transfer connection transfers the actual files while the control connection transfers control information such as passwords to ensure data retrieval in case of data loss. For example, when you upload a file to a website using an FTP client, the client establishes two TCP connections with the server. One connection is used for sending commands and receiving responses, which is called as control connection, while the other is used for transferring the actual file data, which is known as data connection. And this allows for efficient and reliable file transfer between client and server. 
Next category we have is Network Security Protocols. These protocols ensure safe data transmission over the network connections. Network security protocols define the procedures to secure data from any unauthorized access. And these protocols leverage encryption and cryptography to safeguard. So let's discuss the widely used network security protocol. First in the list is SFTP, which is known as Secure File Transfer Protocol which helps securely transfer file across a network by using public key encryption and authenticating the client and the server. If you want to know more about public key encryption and decryption, what are different types of encryption, you can refer to my previous video on encryption and decryption. So SFTP is similar to FTP, but it ensures security of your files. Suppose your company needs to securely transmit sensitive financial document from headquarter to regional office then you will use the SFTP to ensure that these files are encrypted during transit and both the clients your regional office and your headquarter are authenticated which will reduce the risk of unauthorized access to the file. Next is HTTPS Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure We discussed HTTP earlier this is HTTPS. It overcomes the limitation of HTTP by ensuring the security of data transmitted between the browser and the server through data encryption. So HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP. For example, when you log into your banking account to make any transaction, your browser communications with the bank servers use HTTPS which ensures that your login credentials and financial data are encrypted during transition. Secure Socket Layer SSL primarily helps secure internet connections and safeguard sensitive data using encryption. SSL protocol enables both server and client communication and server to server communication. For example, suppose you are shopping online and you proceed to check out page to enter your credit card details. The website uses SSL to ensure a secure communication between your browser and the server, which encrypts your credit card information before transmitting it over internet. And this encryption helps you protect your sensitive data from being intercepted by cyber criminals. Next category is Network Management Protocols. Network Management Protocols ensure quick troubleshooting and optimal performance across the network. So first in the list of Network Management Protocol, we have SNMP, which is Simple Network Management Protocol. It helps administrator manage network devices by monitoring endpoint information to proactively track network performance and pinpoint network glitches for quick troubleshooting. For example, imagine a large company with multiple branches across different cities. The network administrator uses SNMP to monitor the health and performance of various network devices like routers, switches and servers. Through SNMP, the administrator can remotely access these devices, collect information data like bandwidth uses, CPU load and receive alerts about any anomalies or potential issues. Like if a router CPU utilization exceeds a certain threshold or if a switch port experiences a high number of errors, SNMP will notify the administrator allowing them to take proactive measures to address the problem before it affects network performance. Next in Network Management Protocol, we have ICMP, which is Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP helps diagnose network connectivity issues. Network devices employ ICMP for sending error messages, highlighting congestions and timeouts, and transmitting other operational information to assist in network troubleshooting. For example, suppose you are experiencing connectivity issues while trying to access a website from your computer and you run a diagnostic tool like ping to troubleshoot the problem. Then ICMP comes into play here by sending eco request messages from your computer to the destination server and waiting for eco reply messages. If the destination server is unreachable due to network congestion, 
routing issues or firewall configurations icmp will return error messages like destination host unreachable or request timeout helping you identify the source of the connectivity problem the most popular model you might have also heard osi model which is open systems interface demonstrates how computer systems communicate over a network this is a seven layered model which visualizes the communication processes between two network devices across different layers network protocols split the communication processes into discrete tasks across each osi model layer and to enable network communication one or more protocols operate at every layer for example internet protocols routes data by managing the information such as data packets source address and destination to enable network to network communication therefore it's referred to as a network layer protocol so this was all for today in our next video we will understand about different osi model layers and how network protocols function in each osi model layer because if we discuss osi model layer today it will be very long video i hope you liked this video please share and subscribe see you soon with another video another topic consider joining me on linkedin thank you bye bye